Good morning. Welcome to Salem United Methodist Church. We're so happy you're here to uh, worship with us this morning. Uh, do we have any visitors? I know we have one. We have Pastor Lee here with us this morning, so please give him a warm welcome for coming and uh, sharing the message with us today. And uh, now it's time for announcements. Uh, just one quick one. Uh, any of you that have a financial statement, it will be sitting out there on the, uh, on the table in the North X, so please collect it before you leave. And I think Wanda has something to share with us. He stole my announcement. <laughs> anyway, today I just wanted to announce and remind you that we have the pulpit exchange. So Reverend Holy is here while our pastor is over at Covenant. Hopefully he survives the hot weather in our church. He's used to air conditioning. So if he looks like he's going to pass out, someone come help him. <laughs> anyway, I have copies of his sermon at the back. So if you have difficulty following along and would like a copy of that, please see me in the sound booth. Thank you. And if you could please stand for the call to worship. Come in from busy summertime days to this place of worship. We come to you from agony to God's word. Come in from the stress of everyday life into the light of knowledge. We come back to seek your soul truth. Come in to worship with offerings of praise. We come to hear the word and we and continue to stand and join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, gather us into this moment of reverence, celebration, and growth. As your sons and daughters, we long for renewed faith and meaning in our lives. Christ's paradise of the flower lights our path with its images of rocky ground, tangled thorns, and green shoots. May the light of your word illuminate our way and become the joys of our hearts. Amen. And again, continue standing and open your red hymnal to number 100. God whose love is reigning o'er us. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5.
And if you'll turn to page, I think it's the incorrect page in your bulletin, but uh, page 757 for Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none that wait for you be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you are your faith for the faithful. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Remember not the sins of my youth, or my transgressions, according to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way, and leads the humble in what is right, and teaches them their way. standing and, uh, and greet each other as you feel comfortable. May the peace of Christ bring you budding blooms of faith. And please don't forget to uh, turn and wave at the camera in the back for all those uh, that are joining us remotely. seated, if you want to turn to hymn 707, hymn of promise, and we will do verses 1, 2, and 3.
and now it's time for our joys and concerns. Uh, you see the joys and concerns that are listed on the board in the Northex, but if you have more that you would like to share, please raise your hand and I will bring the microphone to you. I just wanted to share that I'm grandma again. Um, Brad and Ashley had a big baby girl, seven pounds, uh, I mean, nine pounds, seven ounces, 21 and a half inches long. So um, we're really happy everybody's doing great. <laughs> I can't think, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we won't have any more drama this week like last, I hope. Uh, so, uh, but I want to thank everybody for their concerns and uh, whether it was uh, calling on the phone or notes or just uh, uh, like coming in this morning. It's just uh, another points out again the loving family here we have here at, uh, at Salem. And Bonnie's doing good. She's going to the doctor this week, so we'll see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. So thank you. I'd like to request prayers for my son-in-law, Brian Williams. Uh, he had a heart attack on Thursday night and is still in intensive care right now. So prayers are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mary remembered it, her name. <laughs> it's Letty May. Letty is supposed to be an old uh, name. Anybody else? I think it's a joy that Pastor Lee can be with us today and bring the message. Anybody else? I have a joy and a concern. Uh, Maddie is finally off the dad dole because her job, she was waiting for uh, paperwork to come through the state for her certification. She passed, as I said, a number of months ago now, and uh, took this amount of time, but she started Tuesday at ThetaCare. So she is gainfully employed. So if you need to borrow any money, anything like that, just reach out to her. And then uh, my concern is my uncle, Dwayne, who has been uh, battling Parkinson's for quite some time. Uh, he fell last Friday. Uh, he was supposed to be coming to the rehearsal dinner that we were in St. Louis for. Fell, broke his hip. Uh, he was between two vehicles in his driveway and laid out there for about six hours before somebody found him. So he's in ICU, uh, continues to be in ICU, and uh, they're watching over him pretty closely, so some prayers would be appreciated. Thanks. So for all of the concerns and joys that have been shared, please lift them up to the Lord. Please uh, pray for those that have not been spoken and uh, continue to, uh, to lift those up to the Lord as well. If you could now join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will share in our offering time.
you could please stand for the doxology. Please uh, join me in the offertory prayer. Just as your word is a light to our path, Holy, Holy One, may our offering of praise be a light to the world. In this season of fruitful gardens, help us share bountiful harvests of our own making. Whether our offerings be of our time, wealth, or prayer, receive and multiply our gifts. Through the glory of your love. Amen. You can be seated. Our scripture reading today is Mark 12, 28 through 34, the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all of the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well, said the teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The word of God for the people of God. And now if you could turn and uh, stand to hymn uh, 2176 in your black hymnals, make me a servant. So let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, with a trembling heart, I stand before 
the Salem United Methodist Church members. Today, uh, with your word, I will try to bring your word to, towards uh, this congregation. So please be with me in this time. And then enable us your word as it is. So that your word just, uh, the, was, will be bring, brought to, uh, to them so that they eat this word just to uh, hurt their heart and mind and transform them into the real, authentic disciple of Jesus Christ through this time. Also, at the same time, please send the Holy Spirit upon me, and then I'm filled with the Holy Spirit so that I can bring your word the, with a more powerful way. Also, at the same time, bring the Holy Spirit upon all of the church members who gather together in this uh, church so that uh, they also uh, listen the God's word and find that the God's specific message in their daily life so that they gladly, they open their heart and mind and gladly accept this word and then the live out uh, this principle of the word of God in their daily lives. Please be, be with us in this time and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ho Lee. Um, the, I'm the pastor of Kabana UMC. Uh, you might wonder why I'm here in the pulpit to preach instead of the Reverend Elliot Martinez. Since I was appointed to the Kabana UMC last July 1st, I realized the four UMC churches were in the Fondrag area. Do you remember that the who they are? Who's that? Which is the four churches in the Fondrag area? I'm sorry, what? Kabbalah UMC? Yep. Salem. 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 Community. Pack to the Gracia. Right. Those are four churches I found in the Fondrag area. It was not very common to have four UMC churches. In the same area because of this the geographical proximity to each other and each church members openness all four churches the, have been connected by doing several mission projects together and supporting each other physically financially and spiritually as you already know all these four UMC churches did the ecumenical vacation Bible school last year and have prepared the other one. Also, we've done the several family ministries together so far, such as the Trinwa Trunk for Halloween Day and Parents' Night Out. In particular, all three established UMC churches in the Fondrag area, including Salem UMC, support a newly founded Hispanic church, Pacto de Gracia as shepherding churches. Thanks to all the churches' active support, I heard and witnessed that this newly founded church has grown exponentially. Although it has been founded for less, only a little more than a year now. Furthermore, I already knew some of the church members here. Although I have been here in the Father area, a little more than also a year now. All three pastors who have served these four UMP churches have been amazed by the connection and its effectiveness for the ministry. Moreover, the pastors agree that making an effort to be one body of Christ beyond our differences is a fundamental goal of the church regardless of the ministry's effectiveness. Because church's oneness embodies the gospel. So we discussed how we encourage our churches to be one body of Christ more. So then, one of the ideas we shared was the perfect exchange. We believe it is the fun and inspiring that each pastor visits other church communities and preaches to them. Furthermore, the perfect exchange would be a great chance to introduce a UMC pastor of the Fondrag area. Today, 
is the second time to implement this idea, the perfect exchange. So Reverend Eliud Martinez came to Kabbalah UMC in the morning and preached it to the congregation. And I'm here to preach it to Salem UMC. I'm very excited and honored to be here to meet and see Salem UMC in this morning. It is my first time preaching in Salem UMC, so it would be to begin my sermon by introducing myself to the congregation. Uh, this introduction is deeply related to the sermon theme I will preach today. By the way, this is the, my the family the picture. And then I have the beautiful wife and then the three children. Um, as I mentioned before, my name is Holy. That is my full name. My first name is Ho. And my last name is Lee. So the reason why I present my full name first, the full name first, when I introduce myself, I learned that Ho had some strange meaning in the United States. Right? In addition, my full name, Ho Lee, is very compatible with my profession. Like, holy, holy, holy. So especially when you think that the holy, 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 I feel like, oh, they're, they're kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. This will help you remember my name easily, right? Right? The pastor, holy. I'm not sure whether you recognize it or not, but I came from the another culture, another country. Probably it's very hard to recognize, right? I look like you, so. Um, I was born and raised in South Korea. My great-grandfather was one of the first Korean people who accepted Jesus as their savior when Methodist missionaries from the United States came to South Korea. My great-grandfather became a Methodist lay speaker. Since then, all my family members converted to Christianity, mainly Methodist. I was raised in the Korean Methodist church as a fourth generation. My religious background and vivid experience of the Holy Spirit when I was nine led me to desire to be a pastor. As soon as I graduated from high school, I entered the Methodist Theological Seminary, so working in several different churches professionally as an intern, a seminarian, a youth director, a young adult pastor, and a worship leader. After graduating from the seminary, I decided to study abroad in the United States to deepen my understanding of God, thanks to many pastors and professors' recommendations. As soon as I got married, I came to the United States with my wife in 2010, around 13 years ago. I entered the Boston University School of Theology and took the Master of Divinity course. While studying there, I interned in one of the United Methodist churches. In the second year of this program, our current bishop, Bishop Kisu Jung, visited the school and invited young seminarians to Wisconsin Annual Conference, emphasizing that they need more younger pastors. I felt called, so I applied to the Wisconsin Annual Conference without knowing where Wisconsin was. <laughs> and they accepted me. And then I surprised, I didn't realize that how far from that the, the Wisconsin was. Right after graduating from Boston University in 2015, I was appointed to one of the local churches of the Wisconsin Annual Conference as a local pastor. Since then, I have served the three different churches for eight years. Somehow, I have studied the theology and professionally worked for churches for over now 20 years. While thinking about the sermon theme for Salem UMC, I decided to talk about the most important lesson I learned throughout these 20 years about God. Before talking about that, I would like to ask you first, 
The question is this one. Let's read it together. What do you think the most important thing is for Christian faith and life? What do you think? What is the most important thing? What? Love. love. Yeah, love, definitely. Anything else? What do you think? Any guess? There is no correct answer. It's okay. Ten commandments, okay. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit right? That's, that's truly. Anything else? Love. What? Love, love yeah, love. Okay, that's great. Um, so, the, I, I believe that the, all of the right, like faith and um, also love, and the Ten Commandments also is a very, kind of very important part of the Bible passage. Um, however, if you ask me the same question, I would like to tell you the following without hesitation. That is, relationship. Relationship. Throughout 20 years of studying the Bible and serving churches professionally, I learned that the relationship is the most, most important one for our spiritual journey. Especially the loving relationship with God and each other. Even I would like to say that the most crucial characteristic of God is relationship. That is why I call God a relational God. We can easily find countless pieces of evidence from the Bible and Christian history. So let's explore just some of them. Let's begin with today's Bible passage. In today's Bible passage, one of the scribes came near to Jesus and asked him the most important commandment in the Bible. In other words, the scribes asked Jesus the most important principle of the Bible. That is the excellent and essential question that all Christians should the today should ask. Jesus' answer is the following. So let's read it together. The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is the one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So what is the most important commandment of the Bible and the principle of the Bible? What is that? Love your God and love your neighbor. Right? In other words, I could say the loving relationship with God and with other neighbor, our neighbor. Now, turn our attention to the Old Testament. More accurately, the Hebrew Bible. Do you know which Bible is the most important book in the Old Testament? Which is the most important Bible in the... Actually, that is, I call that Moses Law. Jewish people say, next one, enter. Torah. Torah. Do you know what the Torah is? Torah is the first five books in the Old Testament. That is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the Torah. In other words, um, they, uh, so all biblical scholars and Jewish people consider these five books are the most important. Then, I will ask one more question. Which part is the most important throughout these five books. Already one lady already said that. What is that? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. It is the principle of the five books. When you closely look at these important Ten Commandments, one by one, you will find the same principle that Jesus found and taught. That is a relationship. From the first commandment to the fourth one, fourth one, 
They are all about the relationship with the who? God. And then from the fifth to the tenth, it's all about relationship with people. People. See? So if you summarize that the Ten Commandments, I can say, love your God and love your neighbor. Uh, when Moses entered the God in front of the burning bush, God introduced himself by saying the following. Let's read together. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses asked God, so you can see that God connected with that uh, people, right? To identify himself. Also, when Moses asked God how he introduced God to the Israelites, God said this one. Let's read it together. So you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. God identifies himself in relationship with others. So that is why God is the relational God. All Christians believe in the Trinity God, right? But what is the Trinity? What is the Trinity? It is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? We believe in one and only God, but understand this God as the Trinity. In fact, this understanding is very hard to understand and explain. Do you understand what it means? How can it that the God is the Word and the Three? So, if you see that the Father is not the Son, the Father is God, the Father is not the Holy Spirit, God is the Father, uh, the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, the Holy Spirit is not the Son. The Son is not the Father, but is God, but the Son is not the Holy Spirit. What, what the heck? Right? So I really want to know, so I studied a lot, and then my professor said that, do not touch the Trinity. You don't get it. Actually, nobody gets it. However, so this is a very complicated the theory, and that even I guarantee you, no theologian, no historical big thinker didn't understand the, what really it means. So you don't, if you don't understand, it's okay. Nobody understands. However, there is some reason why we keep this understanding of God. This is because it shows the most essential characteristic of God. That is relationship. Relationship. So three persons connected to each other and work through it. So they are one as a relationship. God related to human beings as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At the same time, God is related to each other as the Trinity God. This Trinity God shows that God is relational. The most critical ministry of Jesus is crucifixion. Right? Why did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus died on the cross to restore the broken relationship between God and human beings. All these things told us that God is a relational. Because God is a relational, the church should be relational too. After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, all 11 disciples and Jesus' followers gathered in a big room with a fear and dedicated themselves to prayer. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, what happened to them? They began speaking in other languages. Right? They came out of the room with courage and boldly preached the gospel to people from different cultures. Because of speaking in various tongues, all people understood the good news and received Jesus as their Savior beyond their cultural differences and language barriers. 
This was the beginning of the church. The beginning of the church could be understood as the restor restoration of the relationship with God and with other human beings. When the Corinthian church members argued over the superiority of, a, of a spiritual gifts of among them, Apostle Paul taught them the most important principle of the church, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's read it together. If I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy God, what a clenching symbol. And if I have a practice power and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have more faith so as to remove mountains, but to do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have a love, I gain nothing. That is the loving relationship. Right before Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus gathered with the disciples at the Last Supper and gave them, gave them a new commandment. Do you remember this new commandment? That is this. Let's read it together. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. You need to remember that this commandment is not for everyone, but for the disciples of Jesus Christ. But today, this new commandment is not for the world, but for the church. All these things lead us to realize that God is relational. And the church should be relational too. I believe you see why the relationship, especially the loving relationship with God and other human beings, is the most important for our faith and life. Then, we should ask ourselves the serious question. How much time and resources do we invest in building a loving and trusting relationship in our personal and communal life? Many people tend to take the loving relationship for granted. Our capitalistic and materialistic society makes us uh, pay attention to money and things, disvaluing our relationship. So many people invest a lot of time and effort to earn money and things, but not to build up a relationship. However, building up a loving and trusting relationship takes a lot of time, money, resources, and effort. Relationships are not free, but costly. However, that is the most fundamental thing to focus on. That is the reason why your faith community, church, is critical. I do not know how you understand the church community. I want to define the church as the training center for relationship. The church is where you learn how to love others beyond all kinds of differences. Wherever I go, some church members always come to me and complain about the church because of some conflict among church members or some difficult church members. I understand their feelings and difficulties. However, they usually misunderstood the church. The church is not only the gathering of saints, but the gathering of sinners. In this gathering of sinners, people should learn from each other how they love each other, despite all their weaknesses, sinfulnesses, and differences. In any church or faith group, there are always EGR people. Show me. EGR people. EGR church member. EGR people. EGR 
is the acronym for what is that? Extra grace required people. Yeah. Wherever you go, you will encounter with the EGR people. I got a lot of them. I got a lot of them. You will see that. However, in fact, these EGR people are God's gift and a blessing to the church. Through this, we learn how to love and how to embrace others. Because as I said before, the church is a training center for loving others. I already knew that Salem UMC is already good at building, loving, and trusting relationship with each other. One of the evidence I see is that you already accepted the pastor from a different country as your pastor as your pastor and loved and supported him. As an immigrant pastor by myself, I understand how difficult it is for the church community as well as the pastor. However, I believe you already experienced the authentic kingdom of God in the church when you overcame these differences and became the one body of Christ. Probably that is why many Salem UMC church members dedicated themselves to supporting maybe Pacto de Gracia and other UMC churches nowadays. However, I hope this church takes one step further to love others, including me. For this, let's do one exercise together. It's not very hard, so please stand up. And if you can. And then maybe the, we just greet to each other by saying this. I know sometimes I'm loving others is really not very easy, right? So go to some people you don't know very well. And then say at least the three people you just shake hands and say that. Say this one. Let's read it together. I do my best to love you. So the reason why I say that because it's a little bit difficult, right? So let's start now. So find at least how many people? Three, and then say that, okay? So let's do it. Okay, thank you. Please uh, come back where you were. <laughs> and now I invite you to please, um, please sit down and then uh, have a little time to reflect on today's word today and then thinking about this question, how this week I will try to love our church member. What, is, uh, what I can do to love and reach out our church member this week to love them. Let's uh, reflect on this question with me. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, today we learn about that, that the, one of the most important principles for being a Christian is to love one another. Especially we have to love you 
and love our church member first and extending to our neighbor. So whenever we try to, to love some people and please be with us, sometimes it is not easy to love even our family members, even our church members. But whenever we see that some obstacles and barriers and difficulties give us to see that uh, give us uh, some new insight and see and then how God loves us first. And then also whenever we try to embrace and love others beyond the differences, please be with us so that we can build up loving and trusting relationship with everybody in the world so that we can transform into the kingdom of God. Please be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand up as a willing and able and join our set closing in the trust and obey that comes from the red hymn from the 467. We'll sing verse 1, 3, and 4. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend, may the love of God binding us together and binding us up. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit leading us together as a church family be with us until we meet again. Amen.